Hi, I'm Lulu, and I've been a CNA for the past 15 years, and I'm here to help anybody, colleagues, CNAs, everybody, how to change ileoconduit bags, and I hope I'm able to teach you, show you, and simplify your life. These are the supplies that we're going to need, okay? First off, you're going to need a Hollister bag, conduit bag. Second of all, you need to have a template to measure the exact measurements of the stoma. Third, you're going to need some alcohol wipes, barrier wipes, you're going to need a cohesive, some stoma powder, some paste, we need to do is wash our hands. This is when we start removing appliances, get gloves, anything you might like, or just a hand sanitizer if you don't have gloves at home, which most people don't. Now that my gloves are on, we're going to assess the appliance, the area, and see what we're gonna need if we're gonna use a prep pad, a barrier pad, or anything to remove the So you raise your blouse shirt, anything that you're wearing, and you see the corner with your nail, try to raise the corner of it and if you do not find resistance you can just simply remove gently but if you do come across where you do find resistance you can use one of the skin no um, sting barrier wipes which you can see here remove it and go around the appliance raising pulling out gently as you can see with ease and comfort, you'll be able to remove the appliance. Make sure you discard the contents into your little trash can. The essential thing here is getting a gauze and keeping the stoma nice, clean and dry. You can create a little dome to prevent any eruptions. Most importantly, to keep it dry. And as you saw, the skin's irritated because of the adhesive pad that is attached to the skin. This is where your stoma powder comes in. As you can see here, we're gonna use this once we're ready to apply. Now, the next thing is we're going to get our stoma bag ready for use. The next step is we're going to get our template. We're going to make sure that we keep a gauze handy at all times just underneath the stoma to keep it nice and dry. Now, with a template, we're going to measure the exact measurement of the stoma. You do not want it too small, obviously it does not fit, and you do not want it too big because it will leak. So you have to write the correct measurement. As you can see here, that's a perfect fit. So our measurement is one and three quarters. Once removing the template, you wanna keep that gauze back on there because you do not wanna mess and you wanna keep it dry at all times. Okay, now you see how irritated the skin is? Make sure CNAs that you report to your nurses assigned to this patient and so they can document After all of the reporting and documentation and care provided to our patients, guess what CNAs, you did such a great job that we have a healthier stoma today. Thank you for the reporting and thank you for the documentation. Okay, so now we're gonna start cutting out the stoma bag to one and three quarters measurement. And you'll see, and if you cut too small, you can go back and cut again. So now, we're gonna try and size it to see if we did a good job at cutting it out. So you wanna remove your gauze, remember, dab anywhere that's wet, keep dry, and just slightly go over the stoma. But we did a perfect job at cutting it out. Yay, nurses, CNAs, anybody? So now that we've done the perfect cut, we want to remove the backing of the bag, as I'm doing. 
remember to throw your trash. You want to have your skin prep ready. And you can also use your paste. I will put the paste over your backing. Let's work your motion, not too much, just enough. We want to use our cohesive backing to create a better seal so that there's no leaking around the stoma. And you need to stretch it out to the perfect size of the measurements of the stoma to create the seal. As you see, you need to go in circular motion or however you choose to make sure that you create the seal of the opening that we just cut. I will apply it to the backing as you see here this is what you always want to have. Okay now that we've applied the cohesive but we, there are two backings to it. Remove the inner one as you saw that we applied the, the gel and I left the outer one, the outer layer of the backing. So now we're going to apply it to the stoma. But don't remove the backing until we do apply it. And as you can see here, we have a perfect fit around the stoma. Press down all around with your fingers to adhere to the body, to the skin. And this is where we move the second backing, which is the outer layer of the bag as you see here. And as you're removing it, start putting a little bit of pressure around it so that it can stick to the body of the patient. Remember to throw your trash. So that's one side. You want to keep it nice and iron. Might get a little wrinkle, but that's okay. You could always stretch it out with your fingernail. As you see, as I'm doing here, you could see that the wrinkles come out and it'll create a perfect seal. So now we go to the other side. We do the same as we did the right. You remove the backing of the outer layer of the bag, toss that in the trash, and you go around it, pushing lightly in the outward position. You might get wrinkles, but that's okay because we will always be able to remove them by pressing outward away from the stoma. You can see here, make sure it's no wrinkles, so use your nails. Ladies, gentlemen, CNAs, RNs, anybody watching, make sure you go all the way around. Get all the wrinkles that you can and just apply your hand for a short period of time, one, two minutes. And you'll have your perfect change of conduit bag. How simple is this? <laughs> that is so funny.